do you take antacids or acid blockers, things like Rolaids, Pepsid AZ, or Zantac? Well, if you do, did you know that you can reduce your risk of getting COVID-19 by at least 50%? Let's see how. Hi, I'm Doug Grant, and a new study was just published, although it probably won't get a lot of hype. This study was published in PubMed. Uh, it's been verified. I'll go through some of that with you, but I really wanted to point out the fact that there's something now, actual real evidence showing that we can do something to reduce our risk of getting this virus, COVID-19, and actually can reduce it 50% or more, in some cases even higher, as I'll show you, just by stopping taking an acids and acid blockers. Now, before we go into the study, let's put this in perspective. Um, the great mask debate, right? Whether you should wear a mask or not and all that. And I've looked at the research and I'm sure a lot of you have too. And, you know, the CDC, you know, came out and says, we can't confirm the accuracy of the numbers um, or any numbers. Currently, we're not finding any data that qu can quantify risk reduction from the use of masks, but they recommend we all do it. And this isn't a uh, pro or anti-mask uh, video. I just wanted to make a point. And the point is that any statistics that we can find are less than 1% um, as far as a benefit of wearing a mask, if there is any. Okay, so 0.8 is based on one study. I'll put in the link here you can look at. And so that's great. And whether you wear one or not, that's up to you. That's what's great about America, right? Your own freedom of, of choice. But the thing is, is think about that and wearing a mask or that you can one, two, three, four, you can call it 5% if you want to go way off so that people aren't saying, hey, Doug, you said it was only 0.8 if anything. And that's based on the research that I can find. But let's even take it up a notch. Let's say it's even 5% um, less risk uh, by wearing a mask. Well, that's great. That's great, but if you take things for indigestion, for bloating, for gas, for heartburn, you're probably taking some form of antacid or you're taking some type of acid blocker, okay, PPI, like, um, like Zantac and those things. Well, what the research shows, and I'm gonna go right to this study. This study is done by Spiegel and colleagues and it was published online July 7th, 2020. And it was published in the American Journal of Gastroenterology. Now, in this study, they show that people using antacids, Rolaids, acid blockers, Zantac, Pepsid, that their use had skyrocketed over the past two, two decades. And in fact, um, ambulatory care visits, people had to go to the hospital in an ambulance, has increased 600% from 1998 to 2015 from the acid blockers, in other words, over ingestion or side effects coming from antacids and mainly acid blockers in the system. So I'm going to quote from the study. They said, although the studies have not borne out many other concerns raised about adverse reaction, they've shown that the drugs increase the risk for infections, including infections by SARS, um, COVID, uh, viruses related to the COVID-19 virus, SARS-CoV-2, and others, basically all the coronaviruses, according to Spiegel from the study from the Journal of Gastroenterology. Now, SARS uses um, a converting enzyme. Uh, it's an enzyme 2 receptor to invade the enterocytes. And what that means is that basically that in order for the virus to get in and invade your cells, then the stomach uh, pH level has to be above three. In other words, as a result of taking antacids and acid blockers that lowers the actual stomach acids in the body so that the virus can get in. That's one theory he came from the study. Whether that's true or not, is that's the reason, it really doesn't matter. What matters is if you take acid blockers to help with indigestion, to help with pain, bloating, gas, heartburn, you're increasing your risk by at least 50%. Now, the study was really good because I love looking at why studies were are uh, done and uh, make sure that they um, are adjusting for different factors so it's not something else, cause versus the effect. They adjusted in this study for based on age, race, ethnicity, education, marital status, household income, body mass index, smoking, alcohol consumption, uh, the region where you live, 
insurance status, irritable bowel syndrome, celiac disease, gastroesophageal reflux disease, cirrhosis of the liver, Crohn's disease, diabetes. Um, so basically they checked all these factors and made sure there really was the fact that if you take acid and acids or acid blockers, that's increasing your risk of getting COVID-19 by at least 50%. That's crazy. Now here's when I say at least 50%, what, what that means because Basically, if you take an antacid or acid blocker daily and you have a 50% greater chance of getting COVID-19. Now, if you take them twice daily, so if you take something in the morning and later on in the day, you are four times as likely to have tested positive for the disease based on the study. Four times as likely, 400%, four times as likely. That is crazy. All because you're taking acid blockers. So we're going around trying to do everything we can and whether you're social distancing, you're wearing a mask, you're doing whatever you can personally, right? wash your hands, good idea. Everything you're doing to be able to lower your risk, we now know you can lower it at a minimum 50%. So what do you do though? Because you have heartburn, you have um, some type of bloating or indigestion. Some reason you're taking an acid blocker or an acid and yeah, maybe it's worth having that pain or that problem to have a lower risk of COVID, I've got it. But what if you can do both? What if you can eliminate bloating, indigestion, and gas, help with digestion, and still lower your risk? You can. If you consume raw foods, raw foods contain things called enzymes in them. When you leave a raw food out, it starts to rot, it digests itself. The enzymes are breaking it down, digesting it. And when you consume these raw foods and chew them well enough so the enzymes are released, then your food is digested down and you don't get heartburn, you don't get indigestion, you don't get bloating, because all indigestion is, is a non-digesting of foods, indigestion. And so what happens is when we don't digest our food all the way down, it causes the bloating. The body sends more water there, it causes bloat. Um, we get allergic reactions many times from our food. So the key is to eat more raw food, more food that contains enzymes in them. Because when you cook food over 118 degrees, so basically any cooked or processed food, you destroy the enzymes. You destroy the ability for that food to digest itself to eliminate bloating, gas, and indigestion. So eat more raw food, but when you don't, you can take back the enzymes that were in the food that you chose to take out. And that's right, you chose. You chose to cook that food. You chose to eat that processed food. You chose to have something that was void of enzymes and no longer had the ability to digest itself that could cause indigestion. But if you add back the enzymes, plant-based enzymes from foods, then it will help with digestion. And the research is extremely strong showing that by adding back the enzymes, you can get rid of indigestion, you can get rid of bloat, you can get rid of gas, you can deliver more nutrients to the body, which helps with weight loss and be able to have all those benefits at the same time as reducing at least in half your risk of COVID-19. So what do you do? Get rid of the acids, acid blockers. Eat more raw food. If you're still having a problem when you do eat cooked and processed food, add back the enzymes so that your body can break the food down to get rid of indigestion and eliminate, greatly eliminate the risk for COVID-19. Give it a shot today. <music>